From a hotel clerk swearing at us for not wanting to sleep in the grossest bed we've ever seen, to some of the coolest retro tech I've ever laid eyes on, VCF Midwest was definitely worth the 15-hour drive to Chicago, even if it did bring up some complicated emotions. Before this trip even happened, I wasn't able to drive anywhere for more than 15 minutes without experiencing incredible back pain, so I had no idea how I was gonna do this. Quick shout out to you, lumbar pillows and reclining seats. Anyway, this one's gonna be a bit vloggy, because that's just the way I filmed it, so let's get right into it. Good day, gang! This is Canadian Computer Collector here, and we are one sleep away from going to VCF Midwest in Chicago. That is Vintage Computer Festival, a celebration of all things retro computing and, uh, telephoning. The real headline here is that my back is f***ed, like, majorly f***ed. And I have no idea how I'm gonna weather the 13 and a half hour drive that we're doing to Chicago with this lovely, where is it? Castle Computer, right behind me, the Heroes 3 Necropolis XP PC. It's a mouthful. Anyway, we're gonna be traveling with my lovely girlfriend Kristen and her Hyundai Tucson, which hopefully is better on the back than my 97 Civic DX hatchback. 5 speed manual, you know, D16 stock. <laughs> we got all three cats here waiting for supper. Food is ready. I can already hear this guy purring. These two are ready, so is June. Let's get it done. Okay, we had to do a second take because Kristen's dress was a little bit uh, revealing. <laughs> Here we are though, the night before VCF Midwest. We've been eating chocolate in bed and watching Home Improvement. Can't think of a better way to celebrate uh, America's uh, greatest uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go to bed and we'll see you in the morning. All right, we are hanging out in my living room. It is almost 7.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time. We're just about to hit the highway. Uh, we're gonna cross into Merca, the Pemina Merca crossing. Minneapolis, look out, here we come. Chicago. All right, well, we just made it through the border check stop and uh, just used the bathroom here. Let me tell you, bathrooms in America just hit different. Hey, Kristen, how's that American washroom? Good. Yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> This has got to be the cleanest Walmart I have ever been inside. Grand Forks, folks. Well, this will be perfect for my wizard robe. Very nice. <laughs> I think I found my home. It's American Walmart. At yeah, Walmart, we picked up a back massager because here we are on hour four and I am already lying down. <laughs> you were looking really comfortable there for a moment. Okay, I'm going back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Cool guy, Kristen. Look at that wrist. So limp. Trip out wasn't too eventful. I filmed a Walmart, a bathroom, and my double chin, and I quickly realized I couldn't be doing this all the time with 4K footage, because I'd have to do a ton of footage dumps. And everyone knows, when you're on the road, you don't want to be doing a lot of dumps. We are headed to get food at a place called Little Canada in Minnesota. We'll be the judge of that. We also decided to drive through Minneapolis, St. Paul, at like four o'clock, so it is Our heavy mom. rush hour. <laughs> oh yeah, we have made it. Little Canada is so cute. This is giving me like Gilmore Girls vibes. Oh yeah. We are eating at Culver's, where everything is farm to table. Here in glorious Wisconsin, glorious, glorious Wisconsin, where people use trailers to haul Two pipes! It's the Windows 10 background, or Windows 7 background. One of the Windows backgrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play Is It 9 p.m. or Midnight in Madison, Wisconsin? The answer is 9 p.m. We will burn Utica to the ground. <laughs> Sir? 
Okay, so we pull up at the Comfort Inn Schaumburg at about 11 p.m. Schaumburg is a suburb in Northwest Chicago, and at this point, we were dead tired and just wanted to go to sleep. After a super pleasant check-in, we headed up to our room, only to find the grossest sh ever. I'm not a snob, but I'm talking about big yellow stains on the bed, the pillowcase, the comforter, the sheets, the mattresses, like the bathtub looked like it was blackened with mold. There was crispy stuff all over the door handles. The nightstand had sticky all over it. It was obvious that nobody had cleaned this room or whoever did was lying. So I asked the guy if we could have another room. So he showed me another room and it was just as bad. So then I asked him if we could have another room and he said he would show me rooms until there was one that satisfied me. I could tell he was kind of getting a little edgy at this point. So we went to another room that was exactly like the first two. It was disgusting on a number of levels, but it was probably the least disgusting out of all of them. So as we're laying on top of this bed, because we don't want to get in it because it's filled with yellow stains, we could hear the neighbors partying because we were now in an adjoined room and the guy wouldn't give us one that wasn't. And he basically just told us that if we didn't like this hotel, that we should just check out and we could get a refund in the morning. So that's what we did. Okay, it is two in the morning almost and we are now heading to another hotel. So, fingers crossed, this one works out. Yay. Okay, admittedly, I don't have a shirt on right now, but we are at the Fairfield by Marriott, and it is lovely. <laughs> Friday arrived with a much better feeling in the air. The f are those things? We checked out of the Fairfield Marriott and into the Renaissance Marriott, which is where VCF was being hosted. Ran into some buddies, got a little bit prepped for the show the next day, and then we went into the city to enjoy Chicago. All right, we are in the hotel now at the Schomburg Renaissance Convention Center and Hotel uh, by Marriott. And uh, we are ready to go explore. This room is way nicer than anything we had before. There's a TV in the mirror. You're gonna have to trust me on this. We'll look at it later. <laughs> yes. oh it's for God. the store, not your house. <laughs> yeah. It's for the store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got Ryan and Garth help bring everything in. Thank you very much. See, TV in the bathroom. Yeah, I thought I told you. Yeah, I told you. At this point, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon, and being small towners, we thought, how bad could rush hour really be? Oh, the sky train, we should be on that. Chris and I love museums, and we really wanted to check out the Field Museum, but at this point, you know, it had taken us two hours to get downtown, and that trip should normally only take about half an hour from where we were staying, and so we decided to just check out the Navy Pier. Right. Now I gotta work in the Let's get wagon. It was a super cool place with lots of cool stuff. It even had sailors wearing those white outfits that you see in cartoons. A giant Ferris wheel and a margarita that made Kristen feel sick. How's that margarita? Arr, I'm a sea dog. And I'm a buoy. After a quick Spider-Man impression, it was time to head back to our hotel. Downtown Chicago is a brilliant place at night, especially on the weekends. It's like the opposite of what our city has. People flock downtown in Chicago to go have fun instead of running away from it for fear of death. You'll note that in this footage of us driving back on the freeway, the opposite lane is absolutely packed with traffic, and that's just from people heading downtown to go have fun. Annie Julio, it's time to hit the hay and get ready for VCF Midwest. Day one. You in the <coughs> damn it. Elevators are pretty swank. All right, day one of Vintage Computer Festival begins. Man, it looks in the morning. You're queuing up. What can I say? Day one was awesome. There was more cool shit there than the yard of a house with a dog that goes to do its business outside in the winter. I took so many quick little shots of cool machines from almost every generation of computing, and it was glorious. So glorious that I can hardly even remember how to go to the bathroom when I think about it. 
We were set up alongside Ron of Ron's Computer Vids, and I hope I'm saying this right, Joachim and Will from KMag Vintage, also within our ring of tables, were Eric from Eric's Edge, Joe from Joe's Computer Museum, Steve from Mac84, Dana from Dana Does Stuff, and Sean from Action Retro. Throughout the course of the day, a sea of humans poured through the event. And while we sat at our booth for quite a while, eventually we couldn't help ourselves, and we ended up getting up, exploring, and talking with people. It was like spending a full day reuniting with old friends, who in reality you've never met in person, but you feel like you know each other so well from online stuff. Yeah. Lunch time, crunch time. And the best part is you get to do it while chatting about and interacting with the toys you've loved since childhood. Rocky, Adrian! Oh, I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> never heard that before. One of those new old friends was Ryan from Everything's Broken Garage. Ryan is a fellow Canuck residing in Newfoundland, and we spent quite a bit of time hanging out together during the event. I can't remember the last time I held a scar to You're on a police scanner. Oh, well, there it is. Because you can pick these we up with a voice change. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> you gonna ghost me? You're gonna answer. Oh, I'm answering. <laughs> Green book. Hello. Hello? Oh, can you hear me? Him, Chris, and I wandered around trying out old tech, discovering machines we'd never seen before, and periodically checking the free pile where I got this Commodore tape drive box. Crazy Ken from Computer Clan brought some really cool stuff out, including his E1, an extremely rare computer I would love to own one day that has a fascinating history. If you haven't checked it out already, you totally should, so go to Computer Clan and uh, watch his video on it. He also brought a touchscreen gaming machine and was using a trash can Mac Pro to prop up an art piece he was giving away. There was so much cool shit there, I ended up filming way more than I needed for this video, so I'm gonna put out another video comprised solely of close-ups of a ton of the machines at the show, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. But for now, enjoy this quick montage. was open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but by about 7 o'clock, things were starting to wind down pretty quickly. We decided to check out some of the weird things at the front. Well, it's clearly not to collect urine. Oh, it's the internet! Push button for more internet. It's not doing it. Let's do it. Oh, no, nope, there it is. Frog rated for 50,000 clicks. It's been approved by the JLP to use the satellites and planetary probes. What a f weird thing. <laughs> and then Chris and I wanted to go get some deep dish pizza, so we ended up at Giordano's, of which we were informed by a local is not the best deep dish in Chicago. After downing some fat za, we headed back to the hotel for the beta test performance of The Stop Bits. Steve from Mac84 dished out some hot razzmatazz before the band started to play, and then the show got on the road. You're just too darn loud! <laughs> You're all... <laughs> Everybody's filming! I'll be back. <laughs> this is like a beta test of our set. <laughs> The music they played was a great mix of relatable computer nerd content, uh, with the highlight, in my opinion, being a song where they sang the instruction set for a 6502 processor. After all that sweet, sweet music, it was time to ice my back and then hit the hay for day number two of VCF Midwest.
Day two was lots of fun. Ryan gave me a 7600 GT graphics card like I was employee of the month at a local McDonald's. And then Chris and I went to go check out and try out more of the old machines at the show. The most memorable part is the stamps. Look, you can do the palm tree. Ooh, the cactus. I ended up filming a lot more cool shit, so let's do another montage. Just as people started to pack up, Ryan suggested we do a final lap of the show to make sure there weren't any screaming deals being left on the table. There were plenty, but Kristen's Tucson was already full, so there wasn't much that I could bring back. Ryan, on the other hand, scored a couple cool things. He got a logic board from a Macintosh 7200, as well as an ancient disk drive from an old digital server. And when I say digital, I mean like deck. But soon it was time to go home. People were starting to pack up their tables, the free pile had thinned viciously, and Steve from Mac84 had rented a vehicle because he'd acquired a cart full of items that he needed to bring home. Now that is living, Steve. Tip of my fedora. Kristen also really wanted to go check out Cheesecake Factory, so we went, grabbed some dinner, and then we lay in our hotel as I nursed my bad back. And the next morning, we hit the road nice and early. What up, fellas? A little far from home. See you guys back there. So what did I think of VCF Midwest? Well, this was the 19th iteration of this event, and from what I understand, the biggest one so far, uh, I loved the venue. I also heard it filled up really quickly, so that's a good sign that maybe next year there'll be an even bigger one. And if you're able to make the drive, or you live in the Chicago area, it is totally worth coming down and having a look at everything. It's free to get in, it remained free this entire weekend, and I think uh, if you missed out on it, then you, uh, you know, probably missed out on something that could have changed your life. Now you might be going to jail. You should have just gone. Am I going back to VCF next year? If my back is good enough to fly, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna do that 15 hour drive because it was totally brutal, but I would definitely fly. And if you thought this was really cool, make sure you check out the montage I mentioned earlier of all the old machines by clicking right here.